Hey guys, it is Saturday morning here in the Philippines, so it is time for us to do our free-for-all weekend video. And as promised, we're taking a look at some muscle cars. I've had quite a few requests to bring out some 60s and 70s muscle cars. Uh, and that's what I decided to do today. So I kind of set up a different theme here with our diorama and already placed eight of these muscle cars in front of us. I tried to pick some cars that we haven't seen for a while. Maybe there's even a couple of them that I'm going to show you that you may have never seen before. Uh, but the ones that we have in front of us right now, these eight is what we'll start with. Um, and the setup that I have here with the trailer is a really cool combination. It's like uh, one that I had to show you guys. I may have shown you before. I'm pretty sure I have because this is one of my favorite like hitch and toe setups that I've put together myself. And it's the Hot Wheels 100% 70 El Camino Super Sport with a hitch, which is really cool. Then the trailer is from Green Light and the 70 Chevelle Super Sport in yellow with the black stripes is from Green Light. So it's a perfect combination. The Hot Wheels 100% is a little bit darker, almost like a taxi cab yellow, whereas the uh, 70 Chevelle, I believe it's called Daytona yellow, the yellow that they used, um, but it could be something else. It may have been 69 that they called it Daytona. But anyways, um, let me show you the El Camino up a little closer here. And this is a really cool piece from Hot Wheels. This is back in the Late 90s, early 2000s, 100% uh, series, and this is one that came in the blister pack, so uh, not your ones that were in the display case, although this one is pretty nicely done. I would say this is true to scale. This seems to be true 164th. The body lines, the proportions, everything seems pretty good. Um, the hood does open, and it does have a detailed, like, chromed engine in here. Um, not sure if it's a big block or small block or what they're trying to represent here. Um, but still pretty cool that it has the opening hood feature. Uh, grill is okay. Um, slightly detailed and it is a separate piece from the interior bucket and from the chassis. So it is separate pieces. The headlights are just painted, so eh, still not bad though. Uh, it's got chrome slot wheels, which look good on this car. And it does say SS454 on the front fender, so I'm going to assume that's a big block in there they're trying to represent. Uh, then you have your detailed tail lights and such. And then, as I said, the really cool feature is this trailer hitch. And it's really cool because I think it's metal. I think it's part of the base and... The base seems to be metal. So really cool piece. They have it in red also, I believe. And then they had the 59 El Camino in the same 100% like truck series. And I believe they have hitches too. So they're really sweet. So in the green light, uh, receiving end of the trailer hooks really nice as you can see. So next is the 70 Chevelle from green light which is nicely executed by them for the most part i'm gonna say i think it's slightly small like if you put it next to their 69 chevelles and such it seems a hair bit smaller um not really with length maybe just a hair but just like the width and everything seems a little bit smaller and the 70 and 69s should be pretty much the same so i'm gonna say this may be a little small for 164th but not way too small uh not like a johnny lightning car or something but still um very nicely done the body lines and everything are well um done everything seems to line up and look pretty good they have the fender emblems and this is supposed to represent an ls6 car because it's from the mechum auction set there's actually a really sweet um chase piece of this that has yellow tires so it's really cool looking it goes very well together it reminds me of a lightning strike car uh so very well done with the detailed bumpers tail lights and such the magnum style uh rally wheels so the magnum 500s and opening hood detailed big block and then the inner fenders are painted black as they should be really nicely done chevelle by green light 
So Greenlight does a nice job on their Chevelles, I will say that. And then behind this, we have a Ultra Hots 64 GTO. And this is the very rare wheel variant. Uh, most commonly is the car will have chrome solid steel wheels on it, like our next on the list, this AMC Rebel Machine. Those are the common wheels that you'll find on this 64 Goat. These five spokes are pretty rare. It's pretty hard to find. Uh, and I'm really surprised that this variant's not worth more than what it is because when you can find it, if you can find it, usually they're only like 10 bucks, maybe 15 at the very most. Uh, but sometimes you probably can even get it cheaper than 10 bucks. Um, but they're very hard to find. Uh, so as I said, the Solid chrome wheel you'll find more often than this. And this is from the Ultra Hot series. I believe it's from the second year. It may be from the first year. I think the first year is 06, and then they launched them again in 07. The uh, 06s have the regular, like, style rectangle blister, and then the 07s have, like, that quarter circle domed blister on the packages. Um, so anyways, really cool combination with the white top, uh, and it is a post car with white interior. It does have an opening hood. This is the same casting that they used for the Super Treasure Hunt, uh, in 2011. So really cool car. Um, up until 2011, even in the main line, it was all metal as a Super Treasure Hunt and regular Treasure Hunt. But now I think, unfortunately, they're starting to make... Uh, variants of it with plastic chassis and stuff and they're popping it in the main line or at least in some of those like Walmart exclusive like series like Valentine's or St. Patrick's Day and stuff like that. Uh, they did have it in a St. Pat's Day set but I believe it did have the metal chassis but it's from probably 10 years ago or so. Um, but yeah really nice with these five spokes. They make a few other color variants of the 64 and also the 65 in the Alter Hots, and they look really good. Nicely detailed, tail lights, tail panel, um, detailed grill and such. So they did a really nice job on these cars. These are really nice for the early 2000s. Uh, really great set of cars. And then, well, we'll go to the Rebel Machine. This is from the Boulevard series the first boulevard series from back in 2012 uh and this was the first time this car appeared and this is the traditional red white and blue amc paint job that they're so well noted for um so very cool car not much detail to the grill but it is part of the interior bucket so that's probably why but the side tampos, marker lights, everything is very well done. No tail light detail. Once again, it's part of the chassis, but really that's no excuse because they do this a lot now, like on all of their premium stuff. And as we've seen on the Ultra Hots, well, that's part of the body. I'm sorry, I was going to say. But the grill on the Goat is part of the chassis. And as you can see, it is pretty well detailed there with the black inserts painted. So I guess it just depends who is marketing and how much the cars are. But I always notice like the premium stuff on the small cards used to have like primitive details. The stuff on the big cards seemed to have more details. And they were also, I think, like a buck more or something. But now everything comes on the big cards that is premium rubber tire cars. So they're all pretty well detailed. And they're also... I think all like five or six bucks predominantly now, depending where you get them. Sometimes maybe even as high as seven or eight bucks. So anyways, let's speed it up a little bit. We'll do the other Hot Wheel we have out here. And I love this car. This is my favorite variant of the regular 66 Nova. Love this one. It's from the FNF set. They just did a hell of a job detailing this car with the headlights, the grill, even the Nova emblem in the grill. Um, the gold metallic looks great. The wheel and tire combination with the chrome five spokes looks great, but I'm kind of biased with these. These are my favorite wheel and tires from Hot Wheels to Real Riders. Awesome job on the insert on the deck lid with the Nova SS emblems, the tail lights, everything is done perfectly on this car the stance looks killer i absolutely love this car and then we have 
a Dodge Daytona from Green Light. And this one's really cool too. This is from, I think, a Mechum series, but from way back when, uh, or Barrett Jackson, something like that. But I really dig this one because of the stillies with the poverty caps. It looks really cool. You don't see that combination too often. It looks great. The hemi orange with the white tail stripe. Very cool looking car. So yeah, one of my favorites that I have from Greenlight. I don't have many Daytonas from Greenlight, honestly. I think I have one other regular one and then a couple of green machines, and that's about it. Most of my Daytonas seem to be from M2. Speaking of M2, that is the next car setting here. And this is the regular variant of the Super Chase that I have. This is from Release 3 in M2. The first, like, branded, D or not branded, but labeled Detroit Muscle. Before they were, Series 1 and 2 were muscle cars. This was... The first one that I think said Detroit Muscle. Although it could have still said Muscle Cars, but I think this one said Detroit Muscle. This is the set that they had all sky hoods. And this is the only car that looked fitting with the sky hood. Because it is a liftoff, six-pack, 440 car. But the only problem is they didn't ever really make a post six-pack car. Unless there was like one of one in existence or something. But I don't ever recall hearing about it. It has the... Old school Kelsey Hayes recall wheels from Chrysler, red line tires. And as I said, the liftoff hood is very suiting because that's exactly what the 446 pack Roadrunner came with. So they nailed it when they did the sky hood on this car. Unfortunately, they do not do the sky hoods anymore. They were not really popular because they are glued on pretty tightly. There's no like removing it and putting it on the car, it stays like this. So I think that's why they failed. But for this casting, it's very fitting. Um, the 70 Chevelle and the 69 Mustang, not so much. Uh, but the Roadrunner, definitely. So next on the list is a special exclusive Yanko Camaro from Johnny Lightning from back in 99 or 2000. This is from a shop that was kind of like... Um, Miho, but I don't remember their name, but I think they predominantly dealt with uh, 118th cars. Uh, they did some stuff with 164. I don't even know if they're still in business, to be honest. If they are, I would say that they're dealing mainly in 118th because I haven't heard of any exclusives from them. The only exclusive places I'm aware of at the time are uh, Miho and Bishop. The others, there may be more, but I'm just not aware of them. So, really cool car. They did well with all the tampos and such. This is the old 69 Camaro casting from JL. As you can see how big the headlights are. They look like bug eyes. But still, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, and the body proportions are slightly off, but not bad. Still better than green light 69 Camaro, in my opinion. Um, so, but JL has re-released the 69 and it is a little bit better than this one, but this one is not bad and it's in like that dark British racing green with the white Yanko stripes. So pretty cool. Nice car, nicely done with the tampos of the Yanko emblems, the tail lights, everything is nicely done. The Goodyear polyglass tires. Everything looks really good, the Krager wheels and such, so they did a great job with this. So, we'll put these two guys here at the gas station getting filled up, and then we've got 12 more to take a look at, guys. So we got to move some of these out of the way and kind of shift them like this. So, next on the list is a green light. I believe... Um, Actually, I don't know. I don't think this is County Roads. I can't remember the series this came from. But this is your 71 383 Cuda. Not your typical Hemi car. But it has the billboards, the black top, and the traditional trademark 71 guild fenders. The 71 double headlights and grill. Um, but just kind of has that Ram Air style rally hood. And then no spoiler, which is also a unique feature. Usually a car with all this high impact stuff and black vinyl top would usually have a spoiler. Um, so no going. 
kind of unique. So that's one of the reasons I brought this guy out. So pretty cool car from Green Light. And that's, I forget what they call this, like mellow yellow. This isn't your sublime or your sassy grass. This is like your mellow yellow. Um, and I'm not sure what the other name was. Plymouth always had a name for it and Dodge had a name, name for it. Same colors like Moulin Rouge and Panther Pink are pretty much the same colors except one had the other and the other had the one. So it just depends. It, you know, who had it is what it was called. So um, I'm not sure the other name of that. I think one was Mellow Yellow though. So next on the list is another AMC. And this is the one that probably made AMC most famous, the Javelin, the AMX. And this paint job is an iconic, once again, red, white, and blue. And this one is pretty cool. This came in a JL box set. Actually, it was a Toys R Us box set from back in probably 2004 or something like that. Um, so really cool car. It looks great. Scaling's good. Uh, the Magnum 500s look great with the red line tires, detailed grill with your EMX emblem, opening hood with your detailed engine, and detailed tail lights. Once again, detailed emblem, AMX, AMC, and so forth. Very nice car. And sometimes, as I've criticized John and Lightning for, as being under scale on a lot of their muscle cars, this one seems to be pretty good. I would say it's pretty much the same as a Cuda, so it looks pretty good, as you guys can see. So not too badly done from Johnny. Uh, so moving along, let's take a look at another Johnny Lightning car. This one is kind of also, I think, pretty much to scale. It may be slightly small when it comes to the width and stuff, but... A bodies were pretty much the same as an E body. So as you can see, length seems good. It just seems like the width is a little bit narrow compared to like the E body because they were pretty much the same width is what I can remember. Um, but this is a really nice car. This is from their 10th anniversary. That's why sometimes I criticize them when they say 50th anniversary just recently. Then back in 2004, they had the 10th anniversary. The 10th anniversary was from when playing Mantis owned them for 10 years, from 94 to 04. So that's where this came from, and I think there's like 20 cars in this set. This roof is supposed to look textured. It's supposed to have that weird flat textured look to it it's not that the paint is bubbling or rashing it's supposed to represent a vinyl top and it does fairly good at that um and then you can see my going is broken so got to be a little careful with that uh then it has the black with the white stripes which is kind of like the opposite of the traditional um white with black stripes or black on black something like that so you don't really see them with white stripes very often occasionally i think uh this is a really cool combination with the white interior and then your uh white stripe white 340 on the quarter and then your diagonal 340 on the hood and then your going that keeps wanting to fall off and then this has the very cool iconic shark tooth grill that all the a body duster owners want so if you have a 70 to 72 duster most people want this grill the shark tooth so really cool really rare and valuable grill and this also has the bumperettes which is also a rare option to see on the duster so that is our a body for this lineup so moving along Mother Johnny Lightning, this is your holiday cars from 2001. 64 Goat, another one. And just, I had to put this in here because of the paint. Love this purple chrome paint. The white interior, the white BF, or white letter BF Goodwrench tires. Your Kragers looks great. Then it has your Tri-Power engine, which is nicely detailed. Hood opens nice compared to the Hot Wheels. The Hot Wheels doesn't want to open that well. So this is a very well done car. Very beautiful car. Nice detail from Johnny Lightning. Love these old holiday rods or holiday hot rods from Johnny Lightning with the color chrome. Uh, some of you guys, uh, 
have shown a lot of these. I know Charlie from his Charlie's Diecast channel, I believe it's called. He has a lot of them that he shows in his videos, and I really love them. Wish I could find more of them here. Um, the problem is like trying to find them without paint issues. This one doesn't have much, a little tarnishing on the roof, but not too bad. Um, so moving along, uh, let's go to another Hot Wheels, or actually let's do our last Hot Wheels cars. We have like three of them. This is from your Hot Wheel Redliner set, the one that had the 55 gasser in orange. This is the first time I think the Copo appears with rubber tires. Even when it was available in RLC as a membership car, it had the red line Neo Classic plastic wheels. So I'm not sure if they released it any other time, maybe at a convention or something prior to this, but I believe this is the first time this car had rubber tires. Uh, looks really good. Doesn't have painted headlights, or well, tail lights. I think the headlights, it's an RS feature. No, it does have the SS style grille. So anyways, um, this is, doesn't have painted lights because this is when they were on the small card. I think this is one of the first car culture sets right after JH1 back in late 2016 or early 2017. So really cool car. Love the Stinger type hood or ram air hood whatever you want to call it but it does look really good that's your typical hood that you see on like yankos the 67 68 yankos and baldwin motion cars and such so really cool has the side pipes it looks like so it kind of reminds me of a baldwin motion copo car because that was one of baldwin motions trademarks was the side pipes so moving along is a 72 Torino from the Fast and Furious set. I'm not a big fan of these cars, but I'm a big fan of this casting because they did an excellent job with the detail, with the headlights, the grill, marker lights, the green metallic is beautiful, the white stripes, everything, the tail lights on the rear bumper. This car is well done by Hot Wheels. Really love the way it looks. So that is why I brought him out and that's why I'm hanging on to this one in my collection and just love the way the car looks from Hot Wheels. So the other one from Hot Wheels and the last one from Hot Wheels is also from the same set of Fast and Furious and I don't know if it was like Fast V8s or something like that. Uh, but anyways, the 61 Chevy, this car is beautifully done to um, the bubble top look love that on the 61 and then they also offered it again in 62 but the regular 62 hardtop had a regular style b pillar but they did offer a bel air bubble top all 61 two-door hardtops were like this though they all were bubble tops love that look they did a beautiful job once again on that front chevy emblem the red white and blue headlights grill Everything is very well done. Same thing with the tail lights, with the bezels, everything. They did a killer job on this car. Tinted windows, all the chrome trim around the windows. They did a hell of a job with this car. And even the undercarriage with the detail and stuff, very nice. Really dig this 61 Chevy from Hot Wheels. And then that is wrapping it up for the Hot Wheels. Let's go to our last couple of green light cars. This is your Graveyard Car 70 Challenger. And I brought this out for one of my e-bodies to represent Dodge because of the rare color combination. The Plum Crazy with the white top. You don't see that too often. It's usually black top. And it's also a Stripe Delete car. So no side stripes, no hood stripes, nothing like that. So it is kind of a rare one. And it is a Hemi car. So that is another thing that makes it even rarer. Having these delete stuff and then the rare white top. So really cool car. Really cool color combination. So that's why I brought him out today. And then... The last green light is a Mustang, and the, one of the most iconic Mustangs, Eleanor from Gone in 60 Seconds. This is one of the very few Mustangs I have, and I 
hang on to this guy because I had the green machine of this and I also had the colored chrome one from Greenlight. So really cool car. They did a heck of a job and you could see they do have like tail light lenses, not just painted tampos for the tail lights like they usually have. So they did a really nice job on this model. The detailed engine painted blue and some like cross braces and stuff really cool side mirrors made to the car i really think they had some help from shelby collectibles with this car but i can't say for sure so last three are auto world and we'll go ahead and do the last ford this is a 72 mustang mach 1 which you don't usually see 72s they're usually 71s and this is in a darker more conservative color but still yet cool because it's like a maroon it's not like a brown or something it is a little bit different so it looks really good in maroon this doesn't have an opening hood either which i'm really surprised from auto world this is another one that i have gotten like the 58 plymouth with sealed hoods and this is also a hobby exclusive so i was really surprised of that but besides that it's well executed with all the details and such and then the overall scaling is correct. So they did a pretty good job on it. So next two, 66 and 67 Chevelles. The 66 from Auto World. Um, would prefer a different color, um, but this is not bad. It's like a bluish green. I don't know the original color, like name of this. 396 big block car, which all the SS's were. They were just three different options with horsepower, 325, 360, and 375. What strange 66 was the only one with the 360. Um, then you had in 67, it was 325, 350, and 375. So pretty uh, strange about the 66 being a 360 horse. It was probably something to do with the cam size or valve size. Not sure. Uh, but yeah, stock hubcaps, red line tires, pretty nicely done. This is my favorite year, Chevelle. Love this year. Love this car. Then 67. Then this is one of the most popular colors back then. In 66, 67, marina blue. And this has a black interior, but like seeing that marina blue, a marina blue, blue, blue and blue, I guess you could call it. Very cool paint scheme and then this guy also well if i can get the hood open i know he has an opening hood there you go once again your big block and very well done nice detail and that is your 67 l78 so it is a 375 horse car l78 ss that was the code for your 375 horse so pretty cool. Uh, didn't really look to see what the other two Auto World said. Sorry, guys. Um, but we're running low on time here, so I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, so this is our weekend video, our free-for-all weekend muscle car madness video. So Monday we'll be coming back with a Hot Wheels Premium unboxing. Not sure what I'm going to do, but I have just about everything available for us. I have trucks. I have muscle cars. I have... Uh, race cars, JDM stuff, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but it will be a Hot Wheels premium unboxing come Monday. So please tune back in for that, and if you have not subscribed yet, please remember to do so. Please give me a thumbs up, share the video, tell your friends about my channel, and enjoy your weekend, and I will talk to you guys on Monday. Thanks for watching.